Hey, I'm Matt Hutchins, and he's Dave Balvaney, and this is Profitability MD. Dave, how are you doing today, buddy? Doing great, Matt. How about you? Life is good as usual, my friend. Episode 152, Four Steps to a Powerful Offer. Four Steps to a Powerful Offer. We talk about irresistible offers, power offers all the time. Just thought it'd be fun to kind of go through, you know, here's four steps for you that you can create your own powerful offer. We're going to come up with some ideas. We're going to critique some ideas. We're going to kind of just brainstorm it. So we, the easy way, four steps to pick up, to create a powerful offer. Number one, pick one product or one service that you offer. One product, one service. You're going to do one thing at a time, right? Number two, decide what you want your client to do or what you want the prospect to do, right? What's the result you want? Number three, dream up the biggest and best craziest offer you can come up with. And number four, we always talk about running the numbers. Know your numbers. What's your acquisition cost? And what's the lifetime value of your client? That kind of gives you an idea of how crazy you can get with the irresistible offer, what you can afford to pay and that type of stuff. So with that in mind, let's talk about some four steps to a powerful offer. What does it make you think of? Well, uh, the, at first, the first thing I do think of is where where and who are you talking? Meaning, where is your audience at? Like, what's the stage of awareness? Um, are they oblivious? Are they pondering? Are they engaged or are they in need? Because each of those offers would be different. If they're oblivious to what you're talking about, then your offer has to be something that's going to educate them as part of the offer. If they're if they're in need, you don't have to like. There's nothing to sell them. You just give them the best price, or you know, give them the best offer you can because they need the product. You know, it's um, if you got a toothache and you're selling um, tooth medicine, <laughs> dental services. How about if you have a, if somebody if your client has a toothache and you're a dentist, uh, you don't have to do a whole lot, um, but get them in the door because they're in pain, they're in need. So, um, so first you got to I think know the state of awareness, and you said um, you got to know the result. What is the what's this transformational benefit that they're going to give? That's the result. And, you know, what's the great thing? So it doesn't matter what type of business you're in. Remember, we're talking about one off. Doesn't matter what business you're in. What's this great result that they're going to get? And that's what you want to talk about in the offer. And if you can name it, that's even better. Even better. But so like, so I have some examples. So I was going to say, like, I just Googled best offer for a landscape. Right. And so what are the things that 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 come up? It's all about price, price, price. Don't overpay. Cheapest landscaper nearby. Uh, uh, Ten cheapest uh, landscapers near me. That's not irresistible offers. Right. Right. Better offers turn into. And here's some here's some good ones. Um, Where is it? Right here. Hold on. Ten. What is it? Oh, I got it right here. Sorry, I had it right here. 10 things that the landscaper will never tell you, right? Remember the Joe Polish, you know, 10 ways to choose a landscaper. 10 things a landscaper will, won't ever tell you, right? Uh, this one is another good one. Eight questions to ask before hiring a landscaper pro, right? Now we're informational. And the last one was again, same thing. How to hire a landscape. Uh, yeah, yeah, how to hire a landscaper. Landscape contract. Right? So, you know, I've also, uh, it, it's also how you label yourself. Um, I've seen some people who label themselves landscape architect. Now that yeah. sounds like, wow, you're, you're really high tech or you're, you know, so again, I'm the lowest pr price lawn guy. Are you a lawn guy or lawn girl, or are you a landscaper? Are you a landscape architect? Do you see the difference and the, well, it's all kinds of things. Yeah, are you mowing your lawn or like, hey, landscape contractors do all kinds of things. They can clear and grade land. They can build hardscape elements, decks, patios, masonry walls, retention walls, uh, irrigation systems, uh, landscape lighting, uh, apply the pesticides and herbicides, cut your lawn and bushes, right? So there are all kinds of things you can do about that. Um, so pick one of those services or again, how do we differentiate ourselves? which this was an example of the education marketing, right? 10 ways to choose, things a landscaper won't tell you, how to choose, 10 things to ask before you do choose. That's great, what you and I would call education marketing, uh, providing a guide. And so presumably if they 
researched or asked for that type of information, you gave them that type of information, you're the guy that's gonna check off all those things, you know, 10 questions to ask, eight questions to ask, are they bonded, are they insured, can I have a copy of the plan, what's your guarantee, check, 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 you know, we have a guarantee, we have a bonded, check, check, check. So you're gonna make it that you happen to check all the boxes for the eight ways to choose a landscape. Yeah, and so uh, some of the boxes that I, I we, we've talked about this before, when you're making an offer, you got to do the who, what, where, when, why, and yeah. um, those are um, and how, of course, and and so who is this? Who is this offer for? Like so, again, coming back to the customer, we started with all right. We're preparing this. We got this transformational benefit. Um, we figured out the awareness of the of the client. Are they? You know, what type of offer you're going to use? There's a lot of different offers you could use. Like, oh, uh, what if you're you're uh, you're talking about landscaping uh the the they could do the decks with pavers or what they call it hardscaping well yeah, yeah. um then you might have to offer a payment plan maybe that's the offer is the payment plan or part of the offer or is this a one-time offer hey if you if you sign up here while it's winter and you do your pavers you get 25 percent off the pavers or we'll give you uh, free pay, free uh, labor with the paper. You know, there's all sorts of different things you can do. Right, and that goes back to knowing your numbers, right? So, so what is your number? If they just bought the pavers from you, you could probably do that for kind of a break even because then you know they'll hire you to do something else, right? Kind of a loss leader. We talked about that before. The gutter cleaner, free, uh, free clearing of your gutters, free gutter cleaning. Well, that's a roofer's. Now I'm up on your roof. I get to see if you got any roof damage, and I can sell you a roof, right? Or clean free gutters because I'm a landscaper because then I could say, you know, it looks like you need some landscaping work. So you could break even or do it for free, the gutter cleaning to get the lifetime value of the client, the new roof, the new landscaping contract. I'll do the, the deck for free because I know I'll get the, you know, pavers where I make a bunch of money, right? Or retention wall, right? So again, that's what we talk about knowing our numbers, which was the, the step number four in this little And if you don't know them, I mean, th then you can't, you can't be as effective in the offer. And when it says know your numbers, um, you got to know that like the labor cost, how long it's going to take. Of course, if you're in the business, you should know all that. Um, but I don't recommend doing anything um, as a break even unless it's accompanying something else major. Um, you know, like, you know, when I say something else major, you want to make a good amount of money. And like you said earlier, never want to be the lowest price that's not an offer that's right. um a, a idiotic is what that is yeah yeah well it goes back so i go on to the on to the, i move on to dennis we talk about dennis all the time uh uh what's some good offers you know so what you're saying you know uh consultate free teeth widening with an initial consultation right so exactly you're going to pay for the initial consultation right and and then i'll give you the teeth whitening for free Right. So I didn't just say free teeth whitening for anybody who walks in the door. Right. No, you got to pay for the standard exam or you might discount the exam. Right. But what are you looking for? You're looking for new patients who might have other issues, not just somebody who wants their teeth whiter. Right. You're doing the examination because you're hoping they have a cavity that you can fill or they're hoping they have a tooth you can pull or they're hoping they need some orthodontics. Right. That there's a percentages or numbers, X number of people that sit in your chair. We'll have one of those issues. So for that, I'm willing to do a dental exam for fifty dollars, thirty dollars, a hundred dollars, whatever you're. If you want to discount that or not, and then you add the free tooth whitening on top of that. This says discount on a combination dental exam, cleaning, and the X-ray. So we can put all three of those together for a package, right? But what are we really looking for? We're looking for the lifetime value. We know that that's going to either get us a new patient who continues to come in repeatedly or it's gonna be somebody with one of those other issues, a cavity, a tooth, a pull, some orthodontics that, that needs handling. And, and so we'll get the money, the real money. And then it's kind of like uh, Dean Jackson always talks about, what if you only got paid if you gave them the result, right? I know that I could get you to lose 20 pounds if you just did exactly what I was gonna say. So, well, why don't you come work with me? Not that you would, but you could say that, hey, work with me for a month and if you don't lose 20 pounds, it's free. Right. But if you do lose 20 pounds, it's whatever. Well, thousand bucks. for instance, uh, like uh, I'll P90X is a good example. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 
they have a great offer, right? They start out with this, this in-home program, you know, it's, you know, they have a lot of successful people at it, but they're not making that much, almost their, their cost to buy the customer. When I say buy, they advertise and, and the yep. cost to bring in that customer is very high, um, like $250. So they sell for like $297. So they don't make much, but where do they make their money? Lifetime value of the customer, knowing your numbers, they make the money on on the upsell that follows, like, hey, do you want this ab kit? And and they make it on the Sticks and vitamins, protein and, yeah. and all that stuff and the vitamins. So the back end, they know the back end, which is the lifetime value. So they can make a great offer on the front end. Uh, see if you know you're talking about the dentist packaging. So I heard a uh, um, a, a car ad that um, on your third, I think it's your um, your third visit, like you get. Uh, you get free services and on your third visit, uh, like, so you come here, you buy tires, you have your car service here. It, every time you come here, you get a free oil change on the third visit. I'm like, well, that's kind of cool. But it, what they're doing is get you in the habit of bringing your car in. And then when you're there the third time, you're getting something else done. Then they do the oil change at no charge on that third visit. Now, there's a little asterisk there, but it's not a bad deal. No, it's a great deal. We actually worked for one. Uh, this was uh, years ago. I worked for a mechanic shop, and it was the the ten point travel inspection. So, kind of in May, he had a list, and that's time we were not doing emails. We we're doing postcards, right? So we did a postcard list, and it was a ten point travel inspection. So before you go on your vacation, you know, again, this was May. Um, come have your car inspected for free, and we'll go through the ten point checklist to make sure your car is safe for your summer travels, right? What do we know that X percentage, turns out the number is about 35%, will need something, right? They'll need a new tire because one's going bald. They'll need new brakes. They'll need new windshield wipers. They'll need the oil changed, right? But we got them in the door with our 10-point travel inspection, and we did it seasonality. It was in May because we know the summer travel season, right? And it was with their existing clients. They had, they had done a good job of, of, of having a list. Now we would do all this via email, by the way, but, but I, I still like postcards. But my point being is, is there's the offer. We, it was a free inspection, but we know there's going to be lifetime value. I'm doing that for free because I can afford one technician can go through the checklist in, I forget what it was. It was less than 30 minutes. It might've been like 15 minutes, but you can do the inspection in pretty much no time. And you know, you're going to uncover, I think it was higher than 35% of the time. They're going to need something. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, because who who is there? I don't know if this was a dealership or just a regular mechanic, but if it's a regular mechanic, then the people who are going to come and take that offer are already out of warranty. So now that they know the vehicle is a certain age, so their target audience is somebody who's not under warranty. And so what the odds go way up that there's something needed on that car, air filters, all sorts of things. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Target then, audience again. You know, you got to start with the target audience and knowing who who they are and how you're going to help them. I mean, that's um, right down the street from us. Uh, I forget one of the tire companies. I can't remember who it is. You know, what the name of the tire not Valley, local as well as regional. And it's um, they will check the tire pressure in your tires for free and 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 pump up your tire. Well, what do they know is that one in whatever are going to need. A new tire. It's it's not just low on air. It is it's got a nail in it, so you need a new tire, or it's 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 shredding, so it needs a new tire. And I've I've taken advantage of that myself, right? But it's especially in the winter time as we start to get winter, the cold will lower the tire pressure. So we go down here and and fill it up for free. They'll do it for free. I think Costco does it for free as well. Well, what are they really doing? They're getting you in the habit. They might uncover something, but also they're building goodwill. That's kind of a dual purpose, right? They're building goodwill. So if I did need a new tire, I'd probably go to them because they're always so nice to me and fill up, you know, my wife and my kids air in my tires. So I don't have to worry about, you know, something like that. That's a great free service. But what are they really doing? They're doing an inspection, free air in the tires. Well, you know, it's it's funny when we're talking about a four steps to a powerful offer. Um, yeah. You know, as you as you know, I'm learning. Uh, I'm, I'm really studying to uh, buy apartment buildings now. Um, rather than single family homes. Well, um, about right now, about 50% of all sales have multiple offers. 
Oh, okay. so if you don't write a great offer to buy in this case, then you're not going to get the deal. And once again, so when you're writing offers, it's not always because you're going to sell. It, it could be because you're in a buying position as well. And your offer has to stand out. It has to be different. And once again, if you're buying something like a piece of real estate, you got to know your numbers going in. Again, same thing. Um, you, you got one offer. I want this facility. I This is the, the, the bid package, all of this. It's not always based around price either in buying. It's sometimes your ability to close, your reputation. A lot of those things come into play. So, um, and then, you know, what are the results in that case? <laughs> you want to buy the property. So here's some other great examples. This was a good one. Um, and I, I Googled this as well. So name one of the best U.S. salons was called uh, Salon U Style. Salon U Style. I'm not doing a promo for them. I'm just doing an example of an ad. And so their ad is a free consultation and a $20 gift card. That's what it says. And the small writing says, you know, $20 gift card towards your first color service right? So this salon has put together a compelling offer. If I get there in, the, in here for a free consultation, I know X amount of people are going to want me to do their hair. Mm -hmm. are going to want me to style it or color it or a combination of the two. So there's my offer is a free consultation and a $25 gift card because hair dye is really whatever. I don't know how much they charge to get your hair done. 100, 200 bucks. It's, it's outrageous for women. But that's, that's one of their offers. We're one of the best salons. Here's our offer. Free consultation from the best salon people and a $25 gift card. Remember there talks about the gift cards are better than discounts. Remember mm -hmm. people just feel like it's real money to trade that in? That was a pretty good one. And, and they'll spend the money in that place. So that's why gift cards are, are ideal. Um, so, you know, the, the one of the things about the offer is when. And what I like and when you talk about when is limiting the offer it's it when your offer is built well yep. and you got a when in there it's it, it's a reason to act now okay so um i give an example my son has a, a pressure washing business um and one of his things right now is it's winter and people don't typically pressure wash but he's been doing a lot more advertising commercially and what he's noticing is that more commercial businesses want their facilities looking great through the winter. So, so he's finding out that, oh, it, I'm, I'm wrong. People do pressure wash in the winter. It's just not residential homes because, you know, you got Thanksgiving and Christmas and you got holidays and nobody's like, they, they don't want to have that done. They always do it in the spring and summer, but, but it's different for businesses because they're maybe getting ready to have big sales and what have, have you. So they want their facility looking as good as possible. Once again, but in order for him to get business right now, he's got to give better offers because it's competitive. He's not the only pressure washing gig in town. Um, but so part of his offer is, uh, is, you know, is, is the chemicals that he uses. Um, like he just did a dock and, and they, uh, you got to be, have all this biodegradable chemicals because it's over water and, and so that was his offer was, hey, I'll, I'll give you the biodegradable chemicals as opposed to my competitor who didn't even know you were supposed to use biodegradable chemicals. So I think I choose a pressure washer, make one that use, do they use biodegradable chemicals, right? That, there's a checklist that you would have, right? Um, we talked about uh, this in the past. I used to work uh, with a child psychologist. That was one of our plans. And so child psychologists can do everything. So we just pick one product, right? Uh, stop the, the, the chaos, the, the yelling and screaming temper tantrums of your child. We had a better title, but you get to stop the tantrums now, right? And that was the whole campaign built upon that. And that was the interrupt, educate, uh, interrupt, engage, educate, and offer, right? So the interrupt is, hey, stop the chaos now. You know, your child having the temper tantrum, then the, then the engage, you know, our, uh, solve, fix it in 30 seconds or less, five minutes or less. I forget our timing on that. And then we educate them. Hey, you know, when your kid's having a tantrum tantrum, it's weird for you. It's weird for your spouse. It's weird for the siblings, the other kids, because now they're walking on eggshells because the other brother and sisters having a temper tantrum. So you're educating them on that, that, that one child having the temper tantrum actually affects the whole family household. So it is a bigger deal. Remember, like you would say, that's a pain point for, for pressuring. It's a bigger deal than you think it is. Not just your kid having a temper tantrum, but it's affecting the whole family and how we all interact. And then your offer is, 
that's what we had was a download our you know guide to, to you know fixing a temper tantrum in five minutes or less. I forget exactly what it was. Right. And I, well, the reason I'm smiling and I'm thinking of Tony Robbins when like when he first got started, he was um, he would talk to all these psychologists, psychiatrists, and they would they called him a flake. But he would always have this: "Give me your worst patient." And who yes. you haven't been able to fix in years and I'll fix them in 10 minutes, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, but the reality is here's the reality in let's say child psychology. So some child psychologists don't advertise. Why? Because the majority of their business comes because they're on uh, a certain role, like with an insurance company. So they get referrals and they don't think they need to advertise. What ends up happening is they're probably the low in the lower tier of payment because they don't advertise. So, you know, if, if you're the psychiatrist and you want to get paid more, well, that's why you advertise. So you can attract clients whose, in this case, whose parents are like, they're willing to go outside their network if you're the one who can fix their kid. Yes. Because yeah. it's a lot more, I mean, look, child psychology, tough business. I mean, and with suicides and all the other things that happen to teeny, teens, it shouldn't come down to money and something so critical like that. No, but, but I mean, I can, uh, that same aspect is going back. So I'm a golfer, right? So, so the back pain and lower golfers, I'll pay any amount of money to fix my back. My wife is a tennis player, tennis elbow. She'll pay any amount of money for, for her, for her tennis elbow to go away or for her knee pain to go away. Right. So I worked with a chiropractor and we did packages for each one of those, you know, uh, cause you could have a lower back, fix your lower back and, in uh, 60 days, right? And, and we did a combination of, it was, he was already doing all these services. He had all those services in the chiropractor. He had uh, a massage person in-house. He had uh, uh, like electro shock, you know, the ET, whatever the uh, ETS, the electronic, you know, shocker, I call it, I forget what it's called. And um, then there was like stretches. He has a stretcher person in there, right? But then he just packaged them all together for, a, for an eight week program, you know, solve your problems in eight weeks for a dollar amount. So it's like, I'll pay a dollar amount to solve my back issue. And if not, but then what's the upsell? A maintenance program. Hey, come in every two weeks to get adjusted to make sure your back doesn't go out of whack again, right? Come in every three weeks or once a month, whatever your maintenance program will be. And now they're on your, right? And, and a golfer, I will pay a, a, a money so my back will be in good shape. I could sell that to my golf friends. I could, I tell my golf friends about that. Oh, you got a bad back. You should go see my, my buddy over here, Larry. Right. But it's designing the irresistible offer, solve my pain, solve my problem. Right. And, and fix it. No matter if it's covered by insurance or not, I just want my back pain to go away. Patty just wants her tennis elbow to go away. Right. That there are these needs and niches that we're willing to pay out of pocket. It ain't about the money. It's about solving the problem. And, and so, um, when you're looking at this offer, okay, you're the chiropractor now. What do you want? You want to play golf. So the focus then is I help golfers, you know, uh, pain, have, have right? pain-free rounds. Golf, yeah, you know. and, and that back, people have back issues that aren't just golfers. They're, you know, people who sit in office chairs all day long, right? There are runners that have knee problems and hip problems. So you, so you design, it could be the exact same package, which would be a massage and a, adjustment and a electric chair therapy and a stretcher but that package could be called the golfer's package the runner's package the tennis package but it's really might be the same package and the goal would be i'm going to make money on this but then hopefully x percentage of them will sign up for kind of the maintenance program it's a great it's worth like a charm i've used that several times by the way but i was looking at this one netflix think about netflix right so originally we had blockbuster video and you and i would go to rent videos right oh now we're really dating ourselves but the pain in the butt was you'd have to bring the video back before you could get another one, or you had these late fees and late charges. So uh, Netflix started out, or oh, we'll send you the video, we'll send you the DVDs, and you just keep three of them at a time, right? You just can't get any more until you return them, and it was free shipping and all that. Kind of. They made it really easy, so I didn't have late penalties, I didn't have to worry about it, and then I could turn it in. And then when they started, remember, you know, when they went to the streaming, it became even more successful, right? That it's, I can get it on my computer and then I can get it on my, well, iPads came up and then obviously our smart TVs came up, which really, I remember when Netflix got on a uh, Comcast uh, platform because they have internet access to Comcast and they could guarantee, they paid up for guaranteed coverage. That's when Netflix went through the roof because now instead of you got HBO or Showtime and they're only showing what movies they want to show you 
and it might be a 1985 movie, and I'm, what? Now I can just go to Netflix and stream it instantaneously. It was the instantaneous. But they started with their offer of, let's get rid of the pain in the rear fees of late fees. Let's get in the, get rid of the, the pain in the butt. We can only have one movie at a time. Well, let's eliminate that. So their offers evolved as their ability evolved, right? And that's what happens in business. You, I mean, look at Netflix today. I mean, arguably, uh, their offer today is um, they hire actors like Adam yeah. Sandler. We're going to give them 250 a quarter of a billion dollars. You make us four movies. We'll pay you a quarter of a billion dollars in advance. So what they're doing, they know there's a, like, you only get it in Netflix. Adam Sandler has a crowd that follows him he's yeah. exclusively. And so they know if we get Adam Sandler, he'll he'll bring X amount of business to us. And so they they've been doing these these different things with these series. And and so they went from a streaming service to a movie company. Yeah. And they're answering a need in the marketplace. So they know their audience. They create they're very results driven. They give you movies that you want to see. They know their numbers. They wouldn't pay Adam Sandler a quarter of a billion dollars if right. they didn't know they can make a lot more by having his four movies on their platform. So it, it, it's, it's, it doesn't matter what your company is. Powerful offers make people, it, it drives sales. That's what this whole, that's what business is all about, driving sales. And think about the things that work, right? So, so like, think of timeshares, right? The timeshare strategy is terrible, but it must work because they continue to do it, right? Come to the beach for a three-day weekend at a discount, right? Uh, but if you come, you got to sit in one of our 90-minute presentations for a timeshare, right? What are they doing? They are buying their audience. I'm giving you a three-day weekend for a discount, you know, instead of a thousand bucks, it's, you know, a hundred bucks. I don't know what the dollar, but the same kind of thing. And they know... I get a 90, uh, 90 minute presentation. You got to come hang out with me. And they know X amount of those people are going to buy a timeshare. That works. Financial advisors and insurance people, they've been using it for years. The plate lickers, right? We're going to, we're going to have a nice fancy steak dinner at, at, at what you, you know, XYZ restaurant, right? I'm paying for your meal. You're going to listen to me talk. And I know X amount of people are going to buy my product, my service, my insurance or my annuity or, or my money management. We know that stuff works, right? Now it works less than it did in the past and yada, yada, I understand all that. But, but those are offers that were working, that did work, that need to evolve from where they were. But my point is there's stuff that might be happening in a different industry that you can apply to your own business. Go back to your son in the pressure washer. We've actually talked about this in the past. He could get somebody to do the gutter cleaning you know, for free. He could team up with a landscaper or a roofer Hey, and now his offer is, you know, I clean your deck and your driveway and a free gutter cleaning. And really he gets the gutter cleaner from a roofer or the gutter cleaner from the landscape guy. And you tell the landscape guy, hey, look, you do the gutter thing for free. And my bet is we'll be able to upsell these people to landscaping or X amount of people will need some roof repairs or gutter repair. So you can take somebody else's idea and apply it to your business, which is why it's fun to Google, you know, irresistible offer or best offer for a dentist or best offer for a chiropractor and just see what pops up, right? Because you can apply it. That, that's what we do in our mastermind group, right? That's the, that's the idea of our coaching program is you and I have that experience. We've dealt with hundreds of business owners. The people that are in our coaching group have done it themselves and they've have dealt with other business owners that they're from. So you have this mastermind, this brain trust of ideas What's help me come up with a compelling, irresistible offer, right? Help me identify who my target market is. And that's what our group coaching is all about. Is you're surrounding yourself with like-minded people that have been there and done that. What was it? There's a saying that I like right now that is, uh, you know, you can learn from your own mistakes, but it's, it's much better and cheaper to learn from other people's mistakes. Absolutely. Right? And, and that's what we're doing in our coaching and mastermind program. So, so I'm trying to bring that back to full circle. Four steps to a powerful offer. Pick one product or one service. Remember, the child psychologist, we're only doing one. The chiropractor, we're only doing one. The dentist, we're only doing one, right? Uh, decide what you want them to do. And a lot of times, you know, if they experience your product or service, they'll buy again. They'll stay with you long term. So what do you want them to do? It Try it before you buy it. That's why we do all that, that free trial, you know, 30 days free, a return at Amazon, return at any price. I mean, at any time. Nordstrom has a, 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 re, a return policy like that, return at any time. Know what you want them to do, 
dream up the, the biggest and best offer you can come up with. And we've talked about joint ventures in the past. And we've talked about dollar discounts for the dentist, hey, free teeth whitening, where we combine it together, you know, uh, fix your back with the massage and the chiropractor and electric therapy and the stretcher, right? You can put something, your own products that you already have or joint venture products together and make it something new and different and then run your numbers. What is it going to cost for me to get somebody in the door knowing that I'm going to make some money on that or I'm going to really make money on the back end because they're going to stick with me or, or buy the other product. So it's it's four steps to creating a powerful, powerful offer. It's really easy. And once you have a powerful offer, it works over and over and over. That's really the message I guess I should have started off with. Is once you come up with an irresistible offer, um, or a powerful offer, it works over and over and over again. It's like yeah, a one, one thing I want to add about the over and over and over again. Here's the thing: when you have a powerful offer and you can spend a hundred dollars on ads and it brings in at least two hundred dollars in profit, then you have something that becomes scalable. That is the goal of marketing. All marketing is to hit the scalability point, and that's why an offer is so important, is because it allows you to scale your business, provided you can service the customer you can scale. And that's what a great offer does. Yes, and I know that's why I always come back to our fundamental, your target market, your million dollar message, your irresistible offer. Because once you've got that figured out, it becomes really easy. Getting clients is easy. Getting clients is fun, right? Wrapping this up, this is what we talk about in our mastermind group, our coaching group, Matt at ProfitabilityMD.com, Dave at ProfitabilityMD.com. This is, we've got our YouTube channel, ProfitabilityMD. We've got our podcast and the website that goes with this, ProfitabilityMD.com. And our heirs of software, we can find any business owner, 50000 75 100000 without spending a dollar more in advertising or marketing. That's our profit acceleration session. If you want one of those, Matt and at ProfitabilityMD.com, Dave at ProfitabilityMD.com. This is what we do for a living. We want you to have the dream of, uh, the, the business of your dreams, right? There's no reason you can't be successful because if you have a target market and a million dollar message and heirs of offer, getting clients is easy, getting clients is fun. Last thing we always say is we need three things to be successful, commitment, a roadmap, and a support group. Dave and I got the roadmap and the support group. You just need your commitment ready to take your business to the next level. Fun stuff, babe. This is good yeah. stuff. All right, Matt. Take care. All right, man.